Shabbat Shalom, Israel, Elder DFG. Hey guys, before we get into the prayer, I want to take a couple of moments um, to share uh, just some general uh, concerns, and then we go before Yahuwah, and then we're going to ask him to bless, you know, today's Shabbat message. But anyway, that being said, several things that um, are coming um, upcoming serious events, and I'm not sure Israel is, is thinking clearly. Uh, Israel is re, uh, prepared for it. Um, even worse, Israel has repented and put herself, ourself, her before Yah, ourself among men, have put ourselves in a position where Yahuwah will embrace us. You know, there's a spirit going on around our people right now that's, that's resonating everywhere. You know, the spirit of rebellion, rebelling, rebelling against leadership, but thinking in that it's about the leadership and it's not about what it's really about. That, you know, the, 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 the bitterness, the confusion is more along the line of, you know, what someone says or how someone says it versus what's going on in the heart of Israel, men and women. You know, Yah gave us leadership because he wanted us to be directed. He gave us leadership because he did not want us to be confounded. He gave us leadership because he wanted us to what? To be strong, to have wisdom, to have understanding. You know, we taught that uh, just this last past uh, Wednesday night uh, Tanakh study. We read inside of Deuteronomy chapter 4. And inside of chapter 4, it talked about, I gave you this Torah so that you would be wiser than the nations around you, so that you would have the understanding, uh, understanding beyond the understandings of the nations, uh, nations around you. But instead of that happening, you know, Israel allowed the heathens to come in with their books, their doctrines their writings, their, their teachers, their overseers, their pastors, and tell us that Yah word was no longer sufficient, that we needed a lesser God. Not God, using their words. We don't need Yahuwah. We need the son of Yahuwah. It's like Batman, not good enough. You need to get Robin. You know, the Green Hornet, not good enough. You need to get... Uh, <laughs> What was his name? I can't even think of it. Toto, whatever his name is. I'm sorry, messing up green. You know, haunted. Look, I think it was, I think I forgot what his name was. Right? But at the end of the day, these conflated lies that they put there upon us and told us that a lesser Elohim would suffice. That the all power, all knowing, all sovereign alone. Yahuwah could not protect what he created from the wickedness upon the earth that he has dominion over. And that somehow or another, if we listen to men and their doctrine, that that would suffice and make it all right. And now there's a, there's a darkness among our people a resentment, a hatred, a rebellion. And it's gone so deep now that we have become the face of everything that's wicked, evil, ungodly, unholy, unclean. And looking around trying to figure out how it happened. Never realizing that an enemy came in thousands of years ago and brought with it its gods and told us their lesser God was better than our sovereign almighty Elohim. And wicked Israelites among us, 1 Maccabees gives an example of that. Wicked Israelite among us came to us and told us, no, 
you know, it'll be better for us if we if we serve the the the, the, the heathen king. If we, if we model their way of doing things, it'll be better for us. Never recognizing that we were a sovereign nation, we were a mighty nation, a wise nation, a blessed nation, a nation that every other nation feared. You know, some of my brothers and sisters may, or may not know the story of Balaam and Balak, what happened between them two. Balak was a wicked Moabite king. Balaam was a prophet of Yashorel. When Yashorel came near, they camped. When we're in the wilderness, Balak the king incentivized Balaam the prophet and told him, if you would just go and tell Yah to turn on Israel, I'll make you rich. I'll give you all the kings. I'll make you all I'll make you one of us. You'll be just like us. You'll be a good, you'll be a good little house nigga. You're gonna be you have everything master got. Master gonna take care of you. Matthew gonna buy you flowers. Matthew gonna buy you furniture. Mm -hmm. Matthew gonna take you shopping. All you gotta do is just be a good servant. Just bow down and worship me. Slaves obey your masters, right? A good Christian obey those who have government and leadership over you. Cause who put them there? According to the heathens, God did. Not Yahuwah. Because Yahuwah said we have no leader over Israel but what? One of our own people. But of course they gave us a new book, New Testament book, and other books, the Quran, the Mood, all those other books too. And told us, no, 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 look over here, look over here. It's not where you are. Because they knew the power, they knew the strength of who we were in our right mind as we were obedient. Our right mind and obedience is the same thing. Not a difference between the two, Yashua. But now we're at a fork road. <clears throat> Dead mayhem is coming. The enemy not only is around us, but the enemy is about to act out his violence against us. Because of our rebellion against Yahuwah. We're not even paying attention. Yah sent his prophets out. To warn us, and what do we what do, and what do we do to the prophet? We just we we sh we try to shame him. We try to belittle them. We you know we we you know we do little clever little things, deceitful little things, and hope that they don't notice the little subtle moves that they're making. You know what I'm saying, or that they make against us, against the prophets. But if you're Yah's prophet, you're gonna see everything. You don't miss anything. You see that accidental uh, text message that was supposed to be going to somebody else, but it came to you. You're like, what is this? And you get told, oh, no, uh, we'll talk about that another time. You see the boss, you know what I'm saying, smiling at you. And then when he goes around the corner, <laughs> you see him talking to the man that you're turning over there. with a, with, and, it's, and he's angry to where y'all were. Never trust thy enemies, right? But we have come to a place now, a crossroads, where judgment is about to happen. I've said it. I'll say it to you again boldly. If you're outside of the protection of Yahuwah, you're going to be destroyed. If you're sitting over there like some Christian saying that, you know, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to wait on Jesus. Then you better go back and read Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10. Because it clearly states you better be doing something. It tells you don't even trust your own mind. They don't even trust yourself. Jeremiah tells us, do not trust yourself. Don't trust what you think. It says, obey Yah's laws, statutes, and commandments, and he will guide you. But inside of his guidance, you are expected to be activated. In other words, getting things done. Not sitting around playing, you know, video games. Sitting around, you know, you know, hanging out on the corner with the boys or the girls. Worrying about what color your nails going to be. Or if your weave is going to come from India or Brazil. Or is your tits sagging too much or your ass too flat. All distractions. All at your own detriment. At your own peril. 
there's evil happening in this earth unbeknownst. And unfortunately, Yashara is some of the biggest perpetuators of this evil. And because there are no voices in Yashara who are bold enough, well, there are a few of us. But there are not enough voices in Israel that's bold enough. The wicked do evil and they hold themselves not. The wicked slay the righteous and they hold themselves not accountable because the righteous of Yashara are too concerned about their image, too concerned about their pockets, too concerned about sexual access. And therefore, shit has hit the fan and nobody says anything about it. Except for the lions and a few lionists. But there's some dark and difficult days ahead, brothers and sisters. There is dread like you have no idea. I know you don't believe it because you've been trained not to believe it. You've been trained to just, you know, Give it time, it works itself out. But that same mindset have gotten many of our ancestors destroyed. Hosea said, my people are destroyed what for a lack of the knowledge. That same wait and see, or same, oh, it can't be that bad. Oh, you know, you know, just do what's right and, you know, and right will come back to you. Here among wickedness, From the wicked come wickedness. Is that not what 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 the proverb teaches in Joshua seven and forty? He said, "Any Joshua eleven and, and seven said said from wicked come wickedness." <clears throat> so, what kind of righteousness you gonna get from evil? What kind of justice you gonna get from evil? You're not gonna get it. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're only gonna get what they and what they're capable of giving. There's a wickedness upon wickedness and worse upon worse. We look around and we see what's happening in America to our babies, our Israelite babies. One out of every two are being offered up into Baal temples, witches who are running the abortion clinics. 53 million of our babies have been killed in the last 30 years. 53 million. And nobody seems to care. At least in Israel. Nobody says anything. Our little boys now being encouraged to wear dresses. Our girls are being encouraged now to, you know, to be boys, be men. Do as thy will. All going against Yah, by the way. As though Yah is not going to, you know, take action. And he is. He's already doing it. All these things they're trying to blame on climate control. They're trying to blame it on Donald Trump. Or they're trying to blame it on Kamala Harris or Putin or Ying or, you know, Netanyahu, whoever it is. Zelensky. All of these are just actors, brothers and sisters. The whole stage, the whole world is a stage. And they're just performing. P. Diddy over here, look. Jeffrey Epstein over there, look. Cat Williams over there, look. Charleston White over there, look. And there we are. Looking out the window instead of looking into your heart. And shit is about to hit the fan. So I want to talk a little bit on this Shabbat about what I will call the desert of sin, the drought, the, the drought, the barrenness that sin bring about to Yashara. And why? The little subtleties there that we don't tend to understand. The strength of Yahuwah in his principles and his values. How he does not compromise. He doesn't make any exceptions. That's heathen thought. Yeah, I know my heart. Again, Jeremiah said what? Who can know the heart? Only Yah knows the heart. And Yah what tries your mind based off of what you do and the fruit 
that you bear based off of what you're doing. And doing nothing is not acceptable before your whore. To be clear. He did not give you life for you to waste it. He did not give you life for you just to, to, to be a mother, be a father, then chill out for the rest of it. Where's that in the book? Our book said where there is no oxen, the crib is clean. But where there's much or many oxen, there's an abundance. What does that mean? That means you're supposed to be doing something. All of us. Ecclesiastic says what? In the morning, plant your corn. In the evening, let not your hands be idle. For thou shalt not know which one Yahuwah will bless. Maybe you'll bless both. Plant your seed in the morning. Don't be idle in the evening. Give yourself every opportunity to see Yah's blessing and manifestation through your obedience, his guidance, coming through his teachers, his leaders, his prophets, not the ones that the heathens create on themselves. No, the one that Yah said when he talked about Jeremiah, he said, I knew you, I sanctified you, I made you a prophet before you were even out of your mom's womb, before you even were, com were developed in your mother's womb. I a drained you prophet. Read that in the book of Jeremiah 1 and 5. But now we walk among men who made themselves prophets. And they lie. Women who have made themselves prophetess. And they lie. They take the word and Joel out of context. And the last days your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Prophesying and a prophet, two different things. The Balaam ass, the ass in the story of Balaam, Numbers chapter 22, he prophesied. An ass, a donkey, whatever you want to call him, a mule. So just because you can prophesy something don't make you any smarter than a jackass. That doesn't qualify you to be teaching anybody. Yah decides who his prophets are going to be. And you'll know them because they'll understand Yah's word. They won't just read scripture to you, brothers and sisters. They just won't open the book and just start reading. Or they won't waste your time telling you, brother, go look up this word, brother. You got to look up this word. You got to be intellectually astute, brother. You know what I'm saying? You got to deal with that silly childishness. Damn house on fire. You over there talking about, I wonder if, 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 if you know, if the bank is going to throw clothes on the house at the end of the month. What how? <laughs> About to burn down. We're at a point in time where the rubber meets the road, brothers and sisters. A time like no other in the history. And Yah's going to send his prophets, those he said what? My servants, who I will reveal what? My secrets to. For who? For the righteous remnant to be guided and for the rest to be judged. Why well, use the word warning? But our people are in such rebellion because we got our eyes on everything but Yahuwah. We want that bag. We want comfort. We just want to wait on Jesus. I'm sorry, Yahuwah. Who in your brain, you've conflated him with Jesus. Yahuwah is my savior. He my redeemer. And I ain't got to do nothing. That ain't what Yah said. Not what he said. Again, Jeremiah made it clear. He's going to look at your fruit. He's going to look at your act. He's going to look at your behavior. And he's also going to look at who you follow. Who you walk with. Who you hang out with. Who is your influence. Do they serve, do they serve Yah? Or do they serve themselves? Or even worse, do they serve you? Amos told us what? You can get your hammer and saw together already. Amos, what? Three and three said, I can two walk together except they agree. Amos chapter, same three, verse seven and eight says, if Yahuwah speak, who but can prophesy? But Yah's prophet only share Yah's word. He don't give you no theology. He's not sitting over there looking at, 
you know, the, uh, from Babylon to Timbuktu. Now they're over there teaching out a New Testament. That's not what Yah's prophets are. What prophets in the New Testament? Name me one. I'll wait. But there Yah say, you know, shall there be a secret and I not reveal it to my, my servants, the prophets? But there's not one over there. Yet they're being taught that that's who you should be listening to. And therefore, the judgment, that fire, when it rains, it's going to pour. And everything that's not tried and tested, it's going to burn. That's what Zechariah was talking about. Three thirds going to, you know, you know, everybody's going to go through the fire and two thirds are going to be burned and one third going to come out. And then over in, in, in the book of uh, Jeremiah, he says, you know, even of that so-called one third, <laughs> only one tenth of that one third, a very small remnant. That's how he really said it. A very small remnant. You ever ask yourself why? Why a very small remnant? There's over 2 billion uh, Christians on earth, another 1.5 billion Muslims. So what's this very small remnant about? Hmm? But that's not small, those are not small numbers. So when he said a very small remnant, he's talking about a set apart group, a unique people, a special people. Better said, an obedient people. But unfortunately for Yashorel, you know, where we were supposed to be the example of all the nations. And now, with a Laughing stock, for lack of a better word. They're not even laughing stock. They're not laughing at us. They don't think what we're doing is funny at all. As a matter of fact, they're blaming us for everything that's happening to them now. You're not noticing. But that's what they're doing. Because they have a wicked plan for you. For all of us. See what they have been over the last 10, 15, 20, 30 years of getting us to let our gods down. You know, stop focusing on your whore, focus on stuff, focus on materialism, focus on entertainment, focus on everything but your whore. Yeah, go to church, but don't do anything they talk about in there. And it doesn't matter because they ain't talking about nothing in there anyway, so right. It's a distinction without a difference. But this lesson today is to the righteous remnant of Yasharel. And I think you want to hear and hope you will learn. Hallelujah. So therefore, before uh, we go to the day's lesson, let's go before Yahuwah. Yahuwah, the sovereign of Yasharel, I come for you, I come before you as a righteous servant, one who loves you with all his heart, his mind, his strength, one who understands the importance of being bold in this time, in these days of cowardness. Yeah, I ask that you would put in my mouth the words to teach, to enlighten, and to strengthen those who love you with a perfect love. Yeah, I ask that you would bind every adversary, seen, unseen, spiritual, natural, that may come against this teaching. Yeah, I ask that your word would penetrate through all the darkness to touch the hearts of those who are in the light. Yeah, I pray that we continue those of us who love you, Yah, that we continue to walk in your ways and teach others to do so as well. Yah, I pray that we will learn how to be tough in these worst of times and that we're not tender, delicate men, tender, delicate women, which you say are those who are cursed, those who hate their brethren, those who, who hate their own children, hate their own kind, traitors. Now I ask that you would, again, bless all those who love you and watch over you. You said that your Ruhu goes throughout the whole earth to do what? Look to show yourself strong on the behalf of those who love you with a perfect love. Their heart is pure to you. They serve no other Elohim but you. 
They want your word. They're attracted. They're drawn to your word, Yahuwah. As our forefathers were when Enoch, the righteous of Yahuwah, would come. The people would gather because they wanted to hear what you had to say, Yahuwah. Yeah, I pray that you would give each and every one of those who are hearing my voice, give them that same burning. When your prophet come, they show up. When the lessons are being taught, they come pen pad, ready to learn and to grow. And prepare themselves, yeah. For whatever evil is upon this land, and they don't compromise under any circumstances, that their righteousness shows up as boldness. Yahoo, I know you can do all things, so I ask you to do that thing for us. Yeah, again, there is no other Elohim for us but you. You are our Savior. You are our Redeemer, just as your word says. As, yeah, we ask that you were bind and you were punished, and as hell has enlarged itself, that you cast every adversary of Yahshua into hell, even the representatives of darkness within Yahshua. And since I know you can do all things, I accept you'll do that thing. That's our acts. As you said, my people who will call by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray, seek your face, <clears throat> turn from our wicked ways, you will forgive our sins and you would heal our land. So yeah, I ask that we have a repentant heart, that you might forgive us, restore us, and strengthen us so we're able to bear these dark days ahead. Hallelujah. So be it. All oh, praises to you, Yahuwah. All right, my brothers and sisters. <clears throat> We're going to cut to the chase today. Go to the book of Deuteronomy, brothers and sisters. Book of Numbers, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Hallelujah. The book of Numbers, and we're going to start reading <clears throat> at the 20th chapter. Okay, and we're going to do our teachings and learnings here. And before I go a little any farther than this, brothers and sisters, you know, there there is a, you know, the book says our people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Inside of the destruction of our people, there is a lack of understanding on who and how to know who are called of Yahuwah to teach Yasharel. Because there are many so-called teachers out there, many so-called prophets, millions. Many of you have followed them. Many of you still follow them. Many of you are following all over the place, following anything. But millions of them out there talking about everything from where the, 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 the land of where we're supposed to be to, you know, is Yah three or is he one? And we just run into it like, like a smorgasbord. Let me go over here, see what they got. Let me get a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this. But do you know that most time people go to a smorgasbord, they come back home and they have diarrhea? Mixing all that stuff together because it's accessible. Your word should penetrate and it should be sovereign, it should be strong, and it should manifest itself. Y'all didn't give us a whole bunch of prophets. He gave us his prophets. And you know them by their ability, brothers and sisters, not only to share the word, but they can teach it. They can break the word down. They don't just give you verse. They don't just read through something and then give you their opinion. No, they're able to relate the past, the present, and the future and bring it all together. That's how you will know. And what they say will come to pass. And Yah's prophets also know they're vulnerable. They already know they can err and make one mistake going against Yah's commandment and lose everything. These prophets among in Israel and everywhere else, they don't have any concept of that. They care less if they get it right or get it wrong because they know you don't care. You're there to be entertained, not to be educated. For here we teach, inform, and educate. Because see, when your heart is clean and your heart is pure and you want the truth and nothing but the truth, you're not going to accept anything less. 
But if anything will do, then anything does do. At your own detriment, I might add. And therefore, the prophets are not held accountable because they're not Yah's prophets and the people are not delivered because the people are being lied to, misled. They're destroyed or being destroyed, led astray. Dumb, greedy dog wolves never can have enough. They're always going to show up at your door looking for something else from you. Or better yet, encourage you to come to their door so they can get something from you. But we're at a crossroads now, brothers and sisters. You're going to have to ask yourself the question, what side of this thing you're going to be on? Because if you pick the wrong side, eternal damnation awaits you, just so you know. I know I don't believe in hell, so what? It's still true. I believe he's a loving Yah. Well, you better go ask the people in the book of Maccabees, chapter 2, when they decided that they were just going to wait on Yah to come to their rescue. Go read it. A thousand of them, men, women, and children, were slaughtered because they didn't understand the importance that they had to do some things too. It wasn't all Yah doing. Yah told them, hey, look, when it comes down to taking a stand and fighting, you had better be ready to do it. I don't help cowards. That's what Yah is saying. See, the wicked flee when no one pursues them. The wicked flee it when no one pursues them. That's cowardly. And I said, I'm not here for the coward. I'm here for the bold. The righteous are as bold as lions. Proverbs 28 and 1. This is gut check time. And whatever's in you, it's about to get exposed. It's about to get exposed. If it's good, praise y'all. Y'all see it, we'll see it, and we're good. But if it's dark, it's wicked, it's evil, it's plotting, it's conniving, self-centered, it's going to get exposed. And y'all going to let you be destroyed. It's only to protect those who obey his commandments and those who are actively bearing fruit. The very reason why you got, I got the two channels around, I have the Tanakh studies for us. I understand, I have to have fruit, brothers and sisters. And many of you may not be able to do that, but you can support the work. You can support the channel. And while I'm thinking about that, I want to thank Brother Franklin, I want to thank Brother William, I want to thank Brother Jonathan, Sister Anita, and Sister Tammy for your support, most recently. And all the other brothers and sisters who support on a consistent basis, you too. Y'all going to bless you. Go back and read Tobit. It tells you all about what Yah says about, you know, being a blessing to Yah's messenger, his leadership. You know, I'll say this about that. You know, you think about the book of Samuel. Everybody talk about the first king. The heathens wanted a king. Yah told Samuel, okay, they want one, give him one. Don't you shut up, though. But they want a king, give him a king. So there was Saul looking for asses for his dad. Couldn't find the asses. His servant said, hey, that's a prophet over there. He probably know. Yah reveals things to his servant, the prophet. Let's go ask him. Maybe he can tell us where to find him. So I said, well, we can't go there empty-handed. He said, well, you know, I got some silver. I'll take that. And they went. And you know what happened? No, Saul didn't find the asses. Yah blessed Saul and made him king. So you figure that out. Figure out if Yah's word is true or not. Hallelujah. But in the meantime, let's kind of talk about the desert of sin. What happened in the desert of sin, the drought of the time that we're in, the wickedness of this time, where the, the famine is coming, they're talking about that, truckers are going on strike, food shortages everywhere, a new disease, triple E now, if y'all know what that is. Same claim mosquitoes. Some say, uh, how you say, genetically engineered mosquitoes who are mixing with other mosquitoes and impregnating them with the juicy juice. You know what that is. You got two, you got leadership all over the world that's impotent. 
None of them seem to know what to do. They all just seem to be, you know, being guided by some evil force somewhere. Nobody really knows who, where, what to believe. You got, you know, the demons controlling the air, using the word climate change to, to really to cover for, for wickedness, manipulating weather, causing droughts, floods, all about, you know, killing what's alive, starve you out as they go about hiding, building their bunkers in the hills, in the mountains, under the earth. But, got you listening to this, looking for sh what's going to happen with Diddy. I can't believe Diddy's so shitty. I don't know why not. <laughs> he ran, he, he, he's an entertainer. What do you expect from him? Like Charles Barkley said a long time ago, I'm not your goddamn role model. That's your parents' job. But again, wicked flee with no one pursuit, easily distracted, doing your own thing until it's far too late. But again, that's what happens in the desert of sin. By the grace of Yahuwah, some of us are still here <clears throat> until y'all take us away. And like Enoch, when we're gone, we'll be gone. Then the shit really gonna hit the fan. And if you still here, boy, you're gonna be, how you say, nose deep in it. Well, let's go to the book of Numbers, chapter 20. Hallelujah. Then came the children of Yahshua, even the whole assembly, into the desert of sin in the first month, and the people abode at Kadesh. And Marion died there, and she was buried there. Marion, the sister of Moses. Same Marion that was in rebellion against Moses, talking, you know, behind his back with Aaron. He got gave the leprosy to. For speaking evil against Yah's prophet, because she thought she could. She died there. And there was no water for the assembly. And they gathered together themselves to get, and they gathered themselves together against, against Moses and against Aaron. The people did. Israel did. And the people argued with Moses. And the people saying, what to Elohim that we were, had died when our brethren died before Yahuwah? You know what they were talking about, brothers and sisters? Remember in the book of Jasher? Matter of fact, let's go over to uh, the book of Jasher, chapter 80, verse 37. Check this out. This is what they're saying they wish it had happened to them. This is, this is Israel in rebellion. God takes you out of something, and then when you get frustrated, you run right back to it. What does the proverb say? The dog returns back to his own vomit. Yeah, pulled them out, and then they got upset with the leadership, and they, what they wanted, they ran right back where they came from. And they accused Yahuwah that there's no leadership. They don't need leadership. I talk to y'all myself. No, you don't. But we'll see. I know you think you do. Y'all has a process. and he don't, he don't get off a process for you. So I send my messengers before you. They're there to warn you. And when you reject them, you're rejecting him. Go back and read 1 Samuel, chapter 8. When they told Samuel, we don't want you, we don't want your sons. We want a king like the heathens around us. They got king, we want a king. Samuel got upset. Y'all told Samuel, nah, I know how you feel. Rejection hurts. He said, but at the same time, Samuel, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. I was the one who gave them the prophets. And when they say that I'm not that you're not good enough, Samuel, they're saying I'm not good enough. But he said, Samuel, you keep telling them anyway. And Samuel did. The same Samuel who blessed and made Saul king is that same Samuel that came down later on and told Saul, you know what, Saul? You're too wicked. You want to be in bed with these heathens. You want to be a people pleaser. You're trying to be popular. 
said, you know what I'm going to do? He said, you know what y'all told me to tell you, Saul? He said, I'm going to take this kingdom from you. I'm going to give it to somebody that's better than you. Boy, every time I think about that, and I'll say this to you, daughter Zion, you out there doing your own little thing, you better be careful. Y'all going to take something from you, take something that you had and say, you know what? Get rid of the old nail. I'm going to give you somebody better than her. You better be careful you don't find yourself in that place, sister. And for you men out there, same thing to you. Don't let, you know, your, your, your nose sniffing behind ass get you in trouble before your whore. You stand for Yah. He'll give you the desires of your heart, including a wonderful, obedient daughter of Zion. Not a housewife, but he'll give you the strength of Yashrael. His woman. Not the leader, the strength. You the leader. She's the strength. That's why he said she's there to help you. He'll send her for you. But as long as you compromising over there and worrying about that, on either side, sister, you too. If it's wickedness because he got a you know pickle that you just can't help but want to put in your vinegar, then a little sourness, <laughs> they're going to get both of y'all straight to hell. A sour taste. A smell. The stench of wickedness. The stench of rebellion. But this is what they told. Him. Look at verse 3. And they and they said in this is Joshua 30, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Joshua <clears throat> chapter 37. I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. <laughs> 80, verse 37. It says, And at that time, many of the people of Israel who had rebelled against Yahuwah, many of the people at that time died, many of the people of Yahshua who rebelled against Yahuwah who would not hearken to Moses and Aaron. That was their rebellion against Yahuwah, not listening to his prophet. But many of you out there, I don't have to listen to nobody. All right, time will tell. But you're on your own. But that ain't what the word says. They would not hearken unto Moses and Aaron and believe not, believe not in them that Yahuwah has sent them. And who said, we will not go forth from Egypt, lest we perish with the hunger in the desolate wilderness, and who would not hearken to the voice of Moses, again, rejecting Yah's messenger. And you will plague them in three days with darkness, and Yahshua buried them in those days, without the Egypt knowing of them or rejoicing over them. Yah killed them. Because they were rebelling against Moses. He told Moses to tell them, they'd say, we don't trust you. We want to stay with the heathens. We think I'm better off with a heathen. I trust the heathen. I don't trust you. And I say, okay, then I'm going to destroy you and that heathen. I'm going to destroy all of y'all with your heathen lovers. With your heathen idolater self. That's what he's saying. And he's doing it. They got our picture, people, the picture of the battery, all over, and our people are dying like flies. People are not talking about that. Young people getting cancer. They can't explain it. Some of us can. And every form of cancer. But there was a warning out there that said three to five years after 2020 that these things would start to manifest and show up in a particular group of people because that particular group of people disproportionately were part of their mandate targeted group and instead of that group of people when they were told hey look this was this was some evil conniving plot against you they just blew us off and still blowing us off when y'all say clearly my word is a healing bomb I can heal you but you got to turn to me and you got to be with me 100% People, I don't want to hear. If I take all that, then I guess I'll die. 
broken clock is uh, how you say it, right twice a day and you're right on that one. Your clock is stuck and broke, but you ain't lying. You will die in your sins. Hallelujah. But this is what they're telling Moses. I'm back to book, book of Numbers. This is what they're telling Moses. I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. You know, you know, you the one caused these problems for us. And Moses looking at him like, I'll be damned. Aaron, can you believe this shit? I know that feeling. <laughs> can you believe this shit? All oh, this and look at this. All oh, this, I, this, I'm that, I'm with you, this, and I'm with you, that. Soon thing got a little rough on them. They like, uh. Oh. I hate you. <laughs> I love you, but now I hate you. I love you and I hate you. <clears throat> hey, look. Verse 4. And you have brought up the assembly of you who are out of this wilderness that we and our cattle should die. Now they're blaming Moses for everything that's going wrong in their lives. And wherefore you have made us to come up out of Egypt and to bring us into this evil place. It is no place of seed or figs or vines or pomegranates. Neither is there any water to drink. I mean, they're just blaming everything on us. <laughs> it wasn't me, it was you. You got diarrhea in the mouth. It wasn't me that you too harsh. You too toxic. You too narcissistic. You directed your venom at me. You called me out for my wickedness. Sound familiar? And so when you see that say the dog going back to his vomit, that's what I mean. Yah will pull them out and then they'll become embittered about something and then they turn and go right back to where they came from as though Yah never pulled them out in the first place. And they're the first one to tell you, Yah, that, hey, Yah told me to come to where you are. They, they will tell you that. And they'll, they'll be there for a minute or two or five or ten. A day, a week, month, sometimes a couple of years. But see, when y'all start to have the, the prophet turn that temperature up on them because y'all is tired of waiting on them, all that wickedness gets exposed. And what do they say? The wicked flee when no one pursues it. Or the dog returns back to the vomit, however you want to say it. Hallelujah. That's Proverbs 26 and 11. I'm going to mark that down. Proverbs 28 and 1. Again, you want to mark it down. Precepts. Verse 6. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And they fell upon their faces and the glory of Yahuwah appeared unto them. So Moses and Aaron so unrighteous but yet Yah is glory with them. Although they're being attacked. All of those self-righteous Israelites who believe, no, you the problem, you the problem. But yet, y'all saying, no, you're not. No, they're not. No, they're not. But on the other hand, you accusers, just understand, when you accuse them, you're accusing me. When you reject them, you're rejecting me. Not anybody. Those who I called and put in play. And you'll know them by their fruit. You'll notice they effortlessly show up. Do the work of Yahuwah. Hallelujah. You know this message here, I'll say this is the second taping of this message today, by the way. Praise Yahuwah. I did one earlier, two hours and 20 minutes. Y'all told me to take it down. I didn't want to. <laughs> it's a lot of time. But y'all say take it down. You missed something. Hallelujah. So I did. So you'll get this message a little later today than normal. Hallelujah. But that's what commitment looks like. What would you do for y'all? He told you to turn back. Would you turn back? If he told you, hey, even though you think you're wrong, you're even though you think you're right, you're wrong. Would you listen? Do you have that kind of obedience in you? Even if you thought you were right, if you believed you were right, would you still listen? For many, I doubt it. But see, I'm not a part of your group. I'm a part of his group. 
So if he said, turn back, I'm turning back. I told about a dream I had, if you guys recall, not long ago, we're in this tunnel, running parallel to the earth, going in one direction, and y'all said, no, DFG, you're going the wrong way, go that way. And I stopped and told everybody with me, hey guys, we're going the wrong way, we got to go the other way. And they were following me. I didn't feel some kind of guilt that I was leading them the wrong way, because I wasn't leading them the wrong way, I was just leading them thinking that we were going the right way. But when I heard Yah voice say, no, that way, I didn't argue, I didn't debate, I didn't get in a fight with him like these people did to Moshe and Aaron. I just said, yes, Yah, hallelujah. And interestingly enough, I'll repeat it again, it was young people with me, not children, just young adults, what we would consider young adults, 25 to probably 40, 45. And you see the older ones with us, you know where y'all were at. Then again, maybe Yah's trying to tell you something. That he ain't, you know, this, 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 I'm going to do what I want to do mentality that you have because you've been allowed to do it for so long. It's going to come back, you know, and bite you in the ass. Maybe that's what he was trying to tell me in a dream to tell you. Not that your age is going to stop you being redeemed, but your rebellion will. Hallelujah. Verse 7, And Yahuwah spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod and gather the assembly together, you and Aaron your brother, and speak unto the rock before their eyes. And it shall give forth his water, and you shall bring forth the water, bring forth to them the water out of the rock, talking about Yasharel. And so you shall give the assembly and their beast to drink. Now see that water is the equivalent of Yah's word. You know, I like to tie that back in with Psalm chapter 1. When David said what? You know, that uh, blessed is the man who walked not after the counsel of the ungodly, that standing in the way of sinners, or, or, or cease himself in the counsel of the wicked. But his delight is in the Torah of Yahuwah. And in Yahuwah's Torah, he meditates day and night. And he shall be, or she shall be what? Like a tree planted by the river of water. See that water? That meditation of the Torah day and night. In other words, we live by his Torah and nothing else in terms of how we serve and obey Yahuwah. But see, even in that, watch this. Even in understanding what we understand, we still have to be very careful. Many of us, we know the word, but we still have that little part in us that says, well, you know, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adjust it based off of my circumstances. God knows my heart. But Jeremiah just told us over in, in the book of Jeremiah 17 and 10. Let's go over there real quick. Jeremiah just, just forewarned us about trusting our own minds. He just told her, I don't know why you trusting what you believe, sister, brother. Why you, why you, I don't know why you doing that. Your mind can play tricks on you. Remember the old ghetto boy, the ghetto boys have a song, your mind playing tricks on me? Y'all say, your mind can play tricks on you. Your mind can deceive you. Look what it says here. The heart is deceitful above all. Jeremiah 17 and 9. Of all things, desperately wicked. Who can know it? That means you can't even know it. <laughs> That's why he gave us his tour to follow. Now when we're all in alignment, we don't have to question what y'all is saying to us. He gave us teachers to break it down and explain it. Make it make sense. So we can what? Put it on. So we can walk in it. But many initial hate the Torah. That's why they tell you it's done away with. No, we want Jesus. We want Jesus. Give us Barabbas. <laughs> I know that shit too. We can't keep it. But these people kept it. Our people are keeping it. The Torah goes all the way back to the days of Noah, by the way. Beyond Noah. The Torah goes all the way back to the days of Adam. Go read uh, the book of Jubilees, chapter 6. Read verse, what? Start reading verse 15, 16. He'll tell you that. Exactly what I said. All you know just for Moses. Well, Noah lived by it. Did well. Everybody after Noah, they lived by it. Did well. Enoch lived by it. People with Enoch, they all lived by the word, Yah's word, which is his Torah. But 300, what? 
Years plus, they had peace in the land and prosper. Abraham lived by it. He was blessed and prosper. Jacob lived by it. He was blessed and prosper. David lived by it. Nabal, even as wicked as he was, Abigail, he lived by it. He prospered. Job lived by it. He prospered. Thought he couldn't be lived by. Oh, you just talking about for the little wicked ones among you? Well, that ain't got nothing to do with, with the, that's the dust in the heart of a man. Got nothing to do with you can't keep the commandments. So that's for, you know, that's why he had to come up with Jesus. All these people kept it, were blessed. Just as Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14 says, if you do all these things, what will reflect in your life. It's all through the book it reflects in their life, but now the heathen's going to come in and tell us, no, you want to be wicked. And therefore, you know, let Jesus die for your sins and that way you can keep on being wicked. Because his blood covers you. His spiritual blood. What the hell the hell? What the hell is spiritual blood, by the way? Drink his I said, eat his flesh and drink his blood. And then you covered by his blood, his spiritual blood. What does spiritual blood look like? It's the Holy Ghost. What the hell is the Holy Ghost? It's something that'll keep you from sinning. You line your asses off. Y'all know it. I think I had the Holy Ghost three or four damn times in my life and they ain't never stopped me from doing a damn thing. Quit playing. Go tell that to some amateur, some novice that don't know any better. Your preacher who laid hands on you and gave you the Holy Ghost was a whoremonger. Would that make you? If he gave it to you, what well, it was in him. Oh no, God gave you a lie. Stop lying on y'all. Y'all don't mix clean with unclean. But I can do this all day long. The crash that... Make you a crash dummy with that foolishness. But I'm not going to waste time. You got to believe what you're going to believe. I'm just here to tell you the truth. Just here to warn you. To the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse 10. I, Yahuwah, search the heart, and I try the man, and I give him every, and I give every man according to what? He said, I give to every man according to something, brothers and sisters. See, these people telling you you don't have to do nothing, right? Just sit and wait. Just believe. Well, that's not what he told Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, what? I tried the mind and even to give every man according to his ways. In other words, what you do. And according to the fruit of what you do. So it ain't just about what you believe. It's how you take what you believe and put it into action. That's what y'all going to judge you on, brothers and sisters. Not sitting around waiting for your heyday. Now you're supposed to be putting in the work. Right along with others, like myself, who put the work in. Right there with me. Helping in any way that you can. Little, great, doesn't matter. But helping all the same. Knowing that y'all are seeing what you're doing and going to bless you for it, by the way. Go read the book. Just told you. Go read Tobit chapter 4. Start reading at verse 6 through 11. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither son of man that he should repent. If he said he's going to do it, number 23 and 19, he's able to perform what he says. And he's saying in your dead necessity because you're being, because you're necessitating a need, he's saying your dead necessity, he's going to bless you. All you, you know, <laughs> intellectual scholars, I bet you, I bet that statement just confused your head probably spinning right now. Because ain't nothing in there anyway but confusion. Figure out what I just said. And then act on it. So that kills all that. I don't have anything to do. Yes, you do. If you expect to be the reward of Yahuwah, you had better. That book, our book, that prophet, what's the prophet say? Where there's no oxen, the crib is empty. <laughs> I'll say it again. Where there's no oxen, the crib is empty. So that means if you ain't doing nothing, you can expect nothing. Let's continue on here. He goes on to say, verse, back at verse, verse we'll go to verse 9. And Moses took the rod from before Yahuwah as he was commanded. And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock. And he said unto them, Hear you now, rebels. <laughs> oh, this piss. 
He said, all this stuff, all these signs y'all have shown you. Y'all could have killed you a long time ago, sister, but you still here. Brother, he could have destroyed you a long time ago, but you still here. And you still calling, you know, y'all into question about things that you don't agree with. See, they're all mad because they don't agree with the situation that they're in. That's what they're angry about. So now they want to return back to the heathens. Like they're doing well over there. Now all of a sudden the house nigga want to stay on the plantation. She loves serving master. After all, he going to take care of all the expenses. All she got to do is cook and clean for him. Be a good nigga wench. And you bucks, don't be talking either. As soon as master gets sick, your ass running out there to the damn cabbage pack trying to figure out how to get him well again. What's the matter, master? We sick. Your nose so stuck up so far up the heathen's ass you can look and see what he had yesterday for dinner. You can see the food stains on his tonsils. Mm. Better quit. Hey, look, you've been warned. Verse 10, and... And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock and said to them, Here now, you rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? Moses said, you know, this is what we got to do for you. All this time, you still don't trust. All this time, you still want it your way. So we still got to treat you like a baby when you really should be contributing to us like a man or a woman. But you still petty. You're still walking in jealousy and envy, bitterness, trying to control something that's not for you to control. We were talking about that last night. We were talking about seven to one daughters. One of the dear sisters brought up, asked a great question about it, what I thought about it. We broke it down, explained it clearly. She said, yeah, I know one thing. If I got to help one of my sisters, I'm going to help my sister. I'm not going to be that selfish. Praise God for you, sister. Like we said, it ain't going to be a choice for anybody anyway. You're going to do it or you, you're you going to get destroyed. Yeah, well, it ain't changing because you don't agree with it. Seriously? I'm talking not to you, sister. I'm talking about those who tend to think that, hey, if I don't want to do it, I ain't going to do it. Then don't do it. But you better believe the consequences are going to be awaiting you. Believe that. And that's for any of you. If I tell you to do something, you decide not to do it, there will be consequences. Let's go on, verse. My job is to tell you. I'm telling you. Verse 11. And Moses lifted up his hand with the rod, and he hit the rock twice. And the water came out abundantly. And the assembly drank, and their beast also. So now they're happy. Now they're satisfied. They got what they want. But just like Saul, Moses let people influence him. He got angry with them. He, got, he became afraid of them. He let them intimidate him. Hell, he let them punk him out because he was mad at him. He said, you just threw his hands up in the air. That's another way of punking out. You just give up, you punked out. Just so you know. That ain't no move of strength when you quit. Cowards quit. When this fight till they die. That's why they call them champions. They never quit till they win. Till the game is over. The stadium is empty. The clock is at zero. Then they get dressed. And they go home grateful that they did their jobs. They don't need a parade. And then they drank. So what did then look at verse 12? And, and you who spoke unto Moses and Aaron? He said, Because you believe me not. Uh oh. Wait a minute. Then you who spoke unto Aaron and Moses and said, Because you believe me not. Uh oh. Then you who spoke unto Aaron and Moses and said, Because you believe me not. Again, uh oh. 
Funny thing happened on the way to the rock. Because you believe me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Yahshua, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given you. This is the water of Merah, because the children of Yahshua strove with Yahuwah, and he was sanctified in them. So now he's telling Moses and Aaron, because you let these people put pressure, when I told you to speak to that rock, you hit the rock. You hit it twice. In other words, you did what you wanted to do and thought it was okay with me, and it isn't. What is the, the Psalms of Solomon, I believe it is, said a small fox has spoiled the vineyard. See these little things that Israel wants to do, blowing off, think it's not important. Yah understands my situation. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, that if Yah is no respect of person and he does not change, you're taking shortcuts, you're compromising, you're doing it the way you want to do it, and you're allowing others to influence it or partake in it, you and those who are with you are going to be destroyed. Yah is not interested in your, in your ideology or your understanding. He's not interested in your interpretation. That's why he sent men like myself to warn you so you don't mis fall into mistakes. And then men like myself have to also guard ourselves against some of you. Because you come at us in these ways and then we find ourselves almost compromising, trying to, you know, accommodate. And y'all put in this message's heart, put a stop to it. So I'm not going to do it. If you're looking for a peace, people please, you might want to go find your pastor. Go find that wicked ass man you lay up with. He'll tell you and do whatever you want to do or used to lay up with, whatever applies. He'll do whatever hell you tell this dumb ass, foolish ass to do. But I'm not going to do it. I'm standing for y'all. And I don't care who likes it. You don't like it, kick rocks. You ain't got to hit the rock, just kick rocks. The way I see it, whatever's for me, if you ain't good enough, y'all bring to me what's good enough. I ain't struggling with that. And none of us should struggle with that. Just like he, like you, uh, uh, Samuel told Saul, said, y'all say, I'm going to get, I'm going to find me somebody better than you, Saul. Just like Abraham told Ismael, you know, Get rid of that old nail. You need a new nail. You don't need that rebellion. You don't need that attitude. You don't need that bitterness. Just going to bring you down. You're going to be pining away right with her. Got a lot to say. But the thing they don't have to say is repent. Or they will, well, y'all forgive me. No, you need to go ask who you offended. That's who you should be going to, not y'all. But you ain't going to do that. Too proud. But go ahead on. Let's You, you go ahead on what you're doing. I, mean, I, I said what you need to say. I, need, I said what needs to be said to you. And that's many of you. I always say, and you too. So Moses and Aaron, he told, because y'all disobeyed me, guess what? I'm going to punish you for it. You're going to pay a price for it. Watch. Keep on reading. That's why I say they think it's that because, just because you don't think it's important don't mean Yah doesn't see it as important, brothers and sisters. That's why you, you have to live by this word. You got to be in this word. That's why you need teachers to help you understand because some of the time you'll read by the stuff and you don't even notice it. Are you reading? Yeah, I know about the story, but do you understand how that story applies to you? Are you hitting the rock when Yah told you to speak to it? Are you hitting the rocks around you when y'all told you to speak to them rocks? Hmm? In other words, you doing what you want to do because you feel some kind of way? Or you don't agree? Are you angry? Are you mad? Are you offended? Hmm? Again, are you hitting rocks? Verse 14, And Moses sent messages from Kadesh unto the king of Edom. Thus says your brother Yashrael, you know the travail that has fallen, befallen us. Like these heathens don't know the situation that we in. Hell, they created the situation that we in. All over this flat earth, I might add. Say so how our fathers went down into Egypt and we dwelt in Egypt for a long time and Egypt vexed us. 
and our fathers. That's all you in love with this, this Kemet foolishness. They, they, they hate us dead and they haven't changed. So while you sitting looking at old Edom, you better, don't forget about Ham and Japheth and Cush. They're all over there. That's why Yah is destroying them over there. Verse 16. And when he cried unto Yahuwah, he heard our voice and sent an angel and he brought us forth out of Egypt. And behold, we are in Kadesh, a city of the othermost of your border. Let us pass, I pray, through your country. We will not pass through the fields nor the vineyards, neither will we drink of the water of your well. No way, we don't want to have nothing to do with those heathens. He told us, learn not the ways of the heathens. Do none of their ordinances. They're vain. Jeremiah chapter 10, 1 through 4 talks, learn not the ways of the heathens. Their ways are vain. They cut it down the tree. They decorate it with silver and gold. And it has no life in it, but they worship it anyway. And now Israel is doing the same thing. So when you go into the land that I put you in to possess it, do not learn the ways of the heathen. Don't give your sons, don't give your daughters to them. But Israel, nah. I ain't trying to hear that. I'm going, I'm going to hit this rock. <laughs> They're going to bless me. I'm going to get abundant. Yeah, he got, they got everything they needed, but the, the people got what they wanted, but not Moses and Aaron. See, in your position of leadership, much is given, much is required. Now, I'm saying to you, if you're calling yourself a leader, you better understand. You better not let anybody put no pressure on you, cause you to compromise or get in your feelings and, and, and go against your who's Torah. It's Torah. It's true. Verse 18. And Edom said unto them, You shall not pass by me, at least I come out against you with a sword, meaning I'll kill you. He is still the same way. It ain't changed. They all claim a civil war is coming. And I know well, that's going to be the Democrats with the public. No, it's going to be everything that looks like, like you, like it always is. It's going to look like melanin. Light, dark, don't matter. As long as they know you one of us. Mm -hmm. I know you don't believe it. I don't. I know you don't. But let's go over to the book of Sirach right quick for you unbelieving Israelites. Oh, no, no, no. They're good ones. Yeah, we heard that already. Let's go to, let's go to, okay, please ask this, like a Sirach, chapter 12. He said, when you will do good, to, I'm going to read one, and I'll stop in a bit. Follow along. Hope you got your pen, pencil, but more than that, I hope you got this going on here and here, right? I hope you're going to meditate upon this day and night and not forget this. All right, every word I'm about to share, let it in. Verse 12, I said, when you do, when, verse 12, chapter 12, I'm sorry, Leviticus, hallelujah. Ecclesiastes, Sirach, chapter 12, verse 1. He said, when you will do good, know to whom you do it. In other words, don't be doing good for no any damn body. So shall you be thanked for your, for the, for your benefits. Do good to the righteous man. And you shall find a recompense. In other words, you're going to be rewarded. And if he can't reward you, Yah will reward you. Hallelujah. Verse 3. There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that refuses to give. That's what the word alms means. Verse 4. Give to the righteous man. But don't help a sinner. So don't tolerate them, brothers and sisters, is what Yah is telling us. They want to violate Yah's Torah, make it very, very uncomfortable for them. Do well unto him that is lowly, but give not to the wicked. Hold back your bread, just so you clear what he's talking about when he's talking about giving. And give it not unto him, means resources. Least he overmaster you thereby. For else you, you shall receive twice as much evil for all the good that you have done unto him. 
That's what the doctor said. Don't tolerate those. Y'all said, you tolerate them, you're going to get double for the trouble. They're going to scorn you. They're going to stab you in the back. And then Yah is going to punish you for even interacting with them. Verse 6. And Elohim hates sinners, and he will repay vengeance unto the wicked. And he keeps them against the mighty day of their punishment. In other words, Yah said, I'm going to lock them into their wickedness, and I'm not going to allow them to repent. See, everybody, well, all you got to do is repent. Not if Yah put a reprobate mind on you. Yah said, some of these wicked, some of these people are wicked, the, the, the Trumps, the Harris, the Diddies, some of you, some of those you know, if not you. Yah said, you, he's already got them just like the fallen ones. He's got them reserved to the day of judgment. They will not repent. They will not change. They will pine away. They're going to rust the way right there in the situation that they're in. Although they've been told time and time and time again to come out of it completely. But like with the rock, they said, well, I'm going to do my version of it. And Yah said, yeah, well, you're going to think you're winning, but you're going to be losing. Like the old, what the, what the old word said, you came a long way, but you went the wrong way. That's going to be so many of our brothers and sisters in here. You've been, I've been serving y'all for 20, 30 years. Yeah, for nothing. For absolutely nothing. Because when you heard the truth, you could have repented. And y'all would have forgiven everything you had done before that. That's exactly what it's talking about. When you go back into the book of, of, of Ezekiel chapter 33. Y'all say, you can spit on a dime and I'll forgive you. But he said, if you don't, none of the good you have done is going to count. But if you do, all the wicked you've done won't count. And you didn't need no Jesus for that to happen, by the way. It was up to you. It was in you to repent. You didn't need no damn lamb slain or some demon called itself a spirit to redeem you of your sins. It says right there, go read the book of Ezekiel chapter 13. He said, your repentance is in you. You can stop. The minute you repent of your wickedness, y'all say, I'll restore you. But he said, but if you, you know, you're doing good and all of a sudden you decide to go back like the dog going back to his vomit, y'all say, I will judge you. Hallelujah. And I'm not going to remember any of the good you did. When I warned you and you didn't take heed to that warning, now your sin. And y'all said, I'm going to let you pine away in it. So you, he, he going to put upon you, you'll never understand that you're wrong. You're going to keep justifying it. And many in Israel are in that state right now, brothers and sisters, in rebellion. That's what he means. Hallelujah. He says, again, verse 6, And he hates sinners, and he will pay vengeance unto the wicked, and he keeps them against the mighty day of their punishment. Give unto, he said, Give unto the good, and help not the sinner. A friend cannot be known in prosperity, and the enemy cannot be hidden in adversity. He said, When shit is the fan, all these people you think your friend, you're going to find out they not. So you house niggas, beware. Verse 9, in your prosperity of a man, enemies will be grieved, but in the adversary, even a friend will depart. So sister, beware who you laying down with. Never trust your enemy, for like iron rust, so is his wickedness. And you can read the rest, they'll tell you about how clever they are. But see this part about never trusting your enemy? I want to get this part in, because I think this is very important. Because if you read back, matter of fact, we're going to come back to that. Let's, let's finish this up, then we're going to come to that, and I'm going to let you go and enjoy your Shabbat. First, I'm back to Numbers chapter 20, verse 20. Y'all willing, I'll get this in. My battery running low. Hallelujah. Verse 20 and 20. And he said, you shall go through and eat them. You, you shall not go through. These, these Edomites won't let us pass. Verse 22. And the children of Yashua and the whole assembly journeyed for Kadesh unto the Mount Hur. Verse 20, and Yahuwah spoke to Moses and Aaron at Mount Har, and by the coast of the land of the Edom, saying, Aaron shall be gathered unto his people. He shall not enter to the land which I have given unto the children of Israel, because you rebelled against my word at the water of Mary. Talking about that rock. Aaron, that's why I say, brothers, how can two walk together except they agree? If you got a brother with you and that brother's not watching your back, get rid of that fool. He ain't, he ain't, he's good for nothing. You don't need him to entertain you. He's supposed to be looking out for you. But it means iron sharpens iron like a brother sharpens the continent of his friend. Say, so take them to Mount Or, strap, and then strip Aaron of all his garments, give it to his son. Okay. And then Aaron died. 
All right. And Moses didn't get into the promised land either, by the way. He died out there too. He saw it, but he didn't go in it all because of that rebellion that went on that he tolerated. Or he let himself get frustrated. Hallelujah. And the ones who caused the problem, they didn't go either, by the way. Except they were, you know, under 20. But all them old heads, the ones that were in that tunnel in their rebellion, they weren't there either. But it says, never trust your enemy. I want to go to that part. Because this is what your enemy looks like, brothers and sisters. And, and we really need to understand this, okay? Say, never trust your enemy. So what is your enemy? Someone say, you're just talking about the Edomite? Them, but not just them. Who is your enemy? Religion is your enemy. Why? Because they try to program you against your whore. The Constitution of the United States is your enemy because they say you don't count as a human being. You're two-thirds of a, of, of a human. Congress is your enemy because they could pass all kinds of laws to give us reprieve, and they have never done it, and never will they do it. The government is your enemy because it's created all of these traps, welfare, child support, all these traps and snares, the mass, the prison industrial complex, all these things the government created to lock you up, to destroy and break down the Israelite family. The church leadership is your enemy. Why? Because they're bought and paid for by the heathen. They're an arm of the government. Corporate executives of your enemy because they pay you pennies while they enrich themselves and they will fire you or destroy you or humiliate you or marginalize you for years and years of your life and they'll give you nothing to show for it. Fire you when they're done with you. When, they, when, they, when you're broken, they get rid of you. The military is your enemy because they'll turn on you following orders. Scientists are your enemy because that's what a lot of these chemicals and these... Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get myself in trouble, but just remember, you know, it was created in the lab, right, Dr. Fauci? Edomites are your enemy because they're just wicked forever. Joseph told you, reminded of that in the book of Jasher. You might want to read that in Jasher 58, uh, 19 through 28. Joseph told us in forever they're going to be our enemies. The bank institution for redlining to keep us in poverty, high interest rates credit ratings, all these things to keep us marginalized. Drug addicts are our enemies because you can't count on them. Entertainers and entertainment enemies because they're a distraction for us. Keep us from focus on, yeah, give them food, give them entertainment. Drug dealers are our enemies because they work for the enemy to destroy their own people. Justifying because, you know what I'm saying, I got to eat. Climate change is your enemy because it pollutes everything and kills the earth. By the hands of the evil. Social activists are evil because they push all the wicked agendas by swords and everybody else who pay them off to do it. S Social society is your enemy. Freemasons, you know, fraternities, sororities, all of them because they are dollars and they are pagans and they treat you to serve the great apprentice and not Yahuwah. They are pagans. In every other national agenda. The homosexual agenda. The reproduction, you know, rights agenda. The killing of babies, women pre protect all of those other agendas. All of those are your enemies. So deal with that. Never trust them. Don't participate. Don't listen to them. These entertainers, entertainment, they are wicked beyond your understanding. These all are paid agents. Some of them are not even real. They're demons looking like humans. That's why they could do some of the shitty, wicked things they do. Laugh about it in the back door, back rooms. Hallelujah. I don't think I left anybody off that list. If I did, you can put him to the list. Hallelujah. But Yahuwah is not your enemy. Yah said he has no pleasure, you know, in, in the wicked being destroyed. But he's going to destroy him anyway. So, again, we have some difficult days coming, brothers and sisters. The desert of sin is here. Rebellion is everywhere. Attacking on Yah's leadership is definitely, you know, commonplace, man. So I will say this to my brothers and sisters. If you love Yah with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, it's time to double down. It's time to keep these commandments. It's time to come in order. It's time to come together, not set apart. Ain't no lone wolf out here. No vagabonds allowed. We are people, are assembled people. The book even says that in the last days, I'm going to assemble my people together from the four kernels scattered the earth. So if you going your way, then you're not going Yah's way. You need to be coming our way. That's what Yah has to say. Hallelujah. So I hope you let that resonate inside your heart. Again, we have Bible studies where we teach and farm and educate. It's like we even have Zoom uh, calls. Uh, we call Thai Action Group Conversations. This platform is here on Shabbat. Again, not three hours and a half of work for you. 
plus study. Hallelujah. Because you're worth it. Hallelujah. As far as I'm concerned, you're worth it. I just hope you feel that you're worth it. And you'll only know that by what? Following along, studying, and growing from it. Hallelujah. So those of again who are supporting the work, praise y'all. Thumb it up, share the video. And thank you again for being a blessing to this work. And y'all will bless you. Hallelujah. Don't forget that. If you don't give to the wicked, but give to the righteous. You see it's a good work, then yeah, that's good soul. You plant seed in that soul, y'all going to manifest and reproduce that for you. In your time of need, you don't have nothing to worry about, brothers and sisters. All right? But it ain't about that. It's about this. But all everything comes together. Hallelujah. It's called equity. We help those who help us. Hallelujah. Praise Yahuwah. That's all I got for you. The time of drought, time of famine is here. Don't die in the desert of sin. Live in the abundance of Yah's righteousness and joy. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered the heart that Yah has planned for those of us who love him. Isaiah 64 and 4. Will you be there? I will. Shalom, Yasharel.